Welcome to Turn a Page, the official comic book club for Nerd Initiative. Each week, the NI Bullpen will be covering the world of comics, talking to creators, deep diving into some fantastic stories, and much more. Now let's hand it over to the team and turn a page. And what is going on, everyone? It is Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you are tuned in for another edition of Turn a Page, the official comic book club for Nerd Initiative. My name is Ken M. You know me as the host of the ODPH podcast. I'm also Nerd Initiative Editor-in-Chief. To my right, your left at home, we have a very special guest. You know him as the guy behind the scenes, maybe the guy in the chair, if you will, if you watch the show regularly. But he's also the host of the 3FM podcast, and he's also the head of wrestling coverage and the host of Wrestling Night Live every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Nerd Initiative. Please give a warm welcome to the one lady, Rich. That is correct. And uh, yeah, it's good to be in front of the camera. Usually I'm behind the camera at this point in juncture, but here I am in front of the camera and hey, I get to talk comic books, which I review for the ball pit every single week as well. Just mm -hmm. throwing it out there. And I also get to talk pro wrestling today. So it's like it's like my happy place. So this is awesome to be here. Thanks for having me back on uh, the camera side of things at Turn a Page. Oh, absolutely. And we have special guests on the line, too, because there is a book that is out via Comixology Originals that is having fans ask, did Chris Castro finish the story? Because <laughs> one of the best books out this year has combined the worlds of pro wrestling with murder, mystery, and action, and gives you just an amazing experience. And we're fortunate enough to have the creators back on the line. Please welcome from Hard Style Juice, Clay McCormick and Ricardo Lopez Ortiz. Guys, thank you for coming back on. Thank you for having us. Excited to be here. Yes. Yeah, uh, likewise. Very... Thanks for having us again. Appreciate oh, it. Absolutely. Because this book has been a staple for me and Rich and a lot of members of the bullpen because we're big wrestling fans. And we do love our drama and we do love our comics. And this series literally has it all. Issue number five dropped on Comixology today as we're recording. But in case anybody isn't familiar with the story for whatever reason yet, give us a quick uh, recap of what has been going on in the world of the Castros. Well, <clears throat> Hard Style Juice is a uh, professional wrestling murder mystery story about a pro wrestling family uh, named the Castros. And after a... Uh, tragedy happens in the ring they kind of are struggling with whether or not uh it was an accident or if it was intentional and it sends one of the family members down this road of uh revenge and dealing with grief and all these uh it, trust me it's not it's not as depressing as it sounds it's actually a lot of fun but uh um it's about it's about the youngest daughter of the family chris castro kind of using professional wrestling to as an outlet to uh, work through her own feelings and also to take out some aggression on people she might think are, are responsible for for uh, the death in her family. Yeah, it's it's an uh, amazing story. And, and watching Chris's journey to discover who killed Ray Castro has been just such a phenomenal read. I mean, Rich, what'd you say? Oh, yeah, I've, I've been loving everything I've read in this book. And it's just just super awesome and it reminds me coming up into this final match uh there's a line that mona says uh and I, i'm gonna read the quote because I, I i just really liked it uh there are no heroes no villains just people who make mistakes and uh i want to get your guys' thoughts obviously being the you know putting it together uh does she uh, see herself rather than uh, to see this in herself rather than everyone else or is this kind of just a generalization i just thought it was just a deep quote for that character um, I think she, she sees it in herself as well as everybody else, because at that moment in the story, uh, the person she's talking about more than anybody else is, is herself because she's gone down this path that, uh, she was so sure was the right one. And now it's, it's looking a little bit more unsure. And, um, you know, she, she's been living with a certain understanding of the world, because of the way she's grown up in this wrestling family and everything that she's been uh, experiencing as far as the business goes and how the theatrics of professional wrestling create such a black and white world that uh, when she's presented with the real world, it's not quite as easy as that. Never is, unfortunately. Very true. Oh, Very yeah. true. Very true. And especially talking about the business of wrestling, we do get a lot of different perspectives of it because, I mean, it deals with independent pro wrestling. There's a lot of very unique business deals, shall we say, especially with one Jack Renault who has his hands in the Castro family business and really kind of gives the readers a version of Dark Side of the Ring that 
I mean, does come with the territory. And I was going to say, how is this so important to explain to the audience? Because we always know what we see on TV and everything's like the bright lights, the big city. But to really kind of bring it to this level and especially the dealings going on with King Castro and Jack. Well, you know, when, when we started this, I think Ricardo and I both wanted to keep it as real as possible as far as the uh, <laughs> Hi, Rick. as far as the, uh, the characters go. And, you know, watching the dark side of the ring stuff and you hear all these stories, you watch that McMahon documentary and it, it, it's it just creates this. It really kind of puts into perspective that there is behind all of the glitz and glamour, all of the, the big broad lights and explosions and everything. It's just people and people do shitty things. Yeah. You know, it's not they're not necessarily pure evil. Well, maybe some of them are, but generally it's it's people making decisions that they think are good for themselves at the time that aren't good for other people and it's unfortunately that's the the reality of of uh, most of the world uh, not to sound too cynical but um so yeah we, we just wanted to kind of find that balance between the uh the the operatic um the operatic action of wrestling and the almost banal reality of of uh of, of what is the underpinnings of everything yeah because i think it, it, you definitely hit it on the head too because like i say this story is not just a wrestling story and that's something i think a lot of readers really when they start diving into this you see there's so much more to this and especially with the style of wrestling that goes on here and ricardo i mean i gotta ask you about this because the the ring work that you've been inspired by to bring to panel here has been always phenomenal from bell to bell and page to page but especially going into the final match and dealing with, you know, the death match style of wrestling. Like this is something that how do you try explaining this to the audiences just seeing this for the first time? Um, so you got a little cut off at the beginning of like your question. Can you like oh. repeat it? Oh, no problem. So like I say, especially with dealing like with the action that you've been putting on from page, you know, page to page, like I say, the, the wrestling art that you're that you're presenting like this is so realistic to wrestling fans so, like i say this is what we see on tv each week but dealing with the deathmatch style which is a very acquired taste was to try bringing that to life here was there anything like how would you describe this genre bringing it to the wrestling fans or to the comic oh, fans? yeah uh i thought like it was more like about um making it like feel exaggerated and bombastic because it is pretty brutal and um and extreme but at the same time like i tried to make it feel like there was like a lot more power to it and uh trying to like make things feel uh grander than they actually are mm -hmm. even though you know it's uh still a wrestling match and like there's still a lot of action going on and stuff so it's a uh, it's a tough it's a tough thing to balance but um i think uh the important thing is that like whatever we're doing in the matches helps uh tell the story of like the actual narrative arc of the characters so like a lot of the matches and stuff like if you see what the characters are going through outside of the ring it tends to kind of bounce off each other and balance each other so i think that's kind of like what the the uh you know the balance that tried to like bring to it that even though it's you know deathmatch wrestling it's really extreme it doesn't mean that it's not telling a story like mm -hmm. just any other match like just a regular match would do absolutely i mean it is definitely a niche audience and the last time we talked to you know i i am in that niche audience as well i mean mm -hmm. i watch a little bit of everything uh so with that being known and the 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 careful work that you guys always put into you know the the book and the story going into that death match and in with the audience and everything and obviously having editors and everything else was there anything you wanted to do f that you couldn't do in the match uh, you know, whether it was a story that you wanted to put in there or, you know, if the like graphic wise, you know, that maybe somebody was like, ah, oh, maybe not. Or even if you were like kind of pulled back from uh, going into that final death match and the book. Um, <clears throat> for me, I, I don't know if there, th there's there wasn't anything that I didn't get to do, but there's some things that I wished I could have given a little bit more space to. 
because you know unfortunately we're bound by 22 23 pages or so so you kind of have to that's part of the business part of the job is how do you tell your story in, in a constrained space like that um and so when we actually when i started kicking around and started building the final issue i did all these outlines and i'm going through these outlines and i'm like jesus this this match doesn't even start until like page 13 you know i i need to figure out how to we need to figure out how to get the information that we need out as quickly as possible so we can have as much of the match breathe as we can but at the same time we're we're a little bit you know it's a book about wrestling and every match has had a wrestling match in it and we've tried to keep it as as varied as possible so to just do another wrestling match exactly you know it, it could get a little bit old so you kind of have to pick your battles as to figure out what's the most dynamic way to get in and out of the situation you know so um there's one moment in particular um I, I guess you could call it a near fall that I wish could could I, I initially had wanted to give that a little bit more rope to uh to to breathe, but I think it I think it ended up working working okay as as we put it in there. But absolutely, Ricardo, is there anything that uh, you would have liked to add in or um the stuff that like uh, I had like no pushback on anything that I drew, so it was like cool let's just go for it so everything like worked out from on my end if anything like i wish we'd just like like clay said we had like more pages to do more more things but uh yeah it's everybody was cool so <laughs> it worked out there that was, way there's one bit towards the end that uh i that he that rick made much more interesting than how i had written it because uh uh just not i guess it's not real epic of a spoiler but there's a scene where um the way that i had it written king castro chops somebody in the shoulder in the in the chest and then candy throws him into the the ring post and when i got the pages back ricardo had drawn candy doing like a backflip off the ropes mm -hmm. with a chair and like double knee kneeing the guy in the head and i'm like oh i mean that's better we could just <laughs> That, that that is definitely a great addition, and as as the fact that I got to read it, it, it comes across super awesome. Like I got to say that as far as like on a side thing, somebody who's watched and consumes a lot of pro wrestling, the one great thing about I can say to sell anything for for your book is that every book, every match feels like it, it doesn't just look like you know it's on a page obviously you're flipping through it's a comic but you can really actually see it, it, the action it it, it really kind of draws you in you almost find yourself in that spot where you start wanting to break out familiar wrestling chants during the match uh, yeah, yeah that's how i've always read it i'm like you know kind of picking the spot and of course you know from my background and being a booker in pro wrestling for a little while i'm looking at it going oh man this is the part of the match where we want the crowd to you know chant this is awesome or this is the part of the match where we're gonna get the dueling chant and you just kind of feel and it just starts getting it going you're like this is awesome and and i'm not saying anything bad because we've i've read some other great wrestling comic books mm -hmm. but i i'll tell you i i just love the in-ring action that hard style juice brings to the table it's oh, it's it's great thank you thanks yeah, i think the, uh, i was going there for uh because i remember like i saw that part and i was kind of like uh and behind the scenes we talked about a lot about candy's like background and stuff and how you know we want to flesh it out more and all that stuff and you know you see kind of hints of it in like the it's the issue before this one right where you see like yeah. the yeah yeah issue the number picture four, yeah. and stuff, the poster yeah and uh so i was kind of like what i want i wanted it to kind of show that like both of them were like even king at one point were like you know really good wrestlers and uh so that's why i was like you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna make this like some kind of like tag team move where he just like you know Larry, it's the dude, and like, and at the same time, she's like coming down off the top rope and stuff. So I kind of like wanted that to be kind of like a like a you still got it moment, where yeah. like you know an old guy does something crazy in the ring, you know, and you're like, whoa, Sting just <laughs> jumped off a balcony. That's crazy. He's old. <laughs> yeah, and as far as the crowd stuff goes, you know, that was always very uh, uh, present in my mind as we were writing. But again what ricardo did to make it so much uh feel so much more of a piece of everything is he started putting a lot of the the crowd dialogue kind of as backgrounds in certain panels mm -hmm. and it's just such a cool design element that really kind of 
ties it all together and and uh because you know it, how many times can you have like one bubble with like four things coming out of it being like the crowd's yelling stuff it, it doesn't always yeah. land the way you want it to right so you know thankfully r- between ricardo and our amazing editor uh dc hopkins they uh they really made it kind of kind of shine yeah and it definitely comes across that way like for us the wrestling fans and i've shown this book to other fans too and they're just like this is probably like the closest it feels like to watching a match unfold and really kind of getting the vibe and, and like what rich was talking about too waiting for that moment to, for the crowd to pop and you can hear the crowd chanting and it's just one of those experiences that until you go to a wrestling match live like you don't know about you like mm-hmm. you can see it on tv sure but it's like if you ever go to a show live you get that uh, feeling and especially to seeing uh, Chris's rise in this world. Like it's just something that coming into it, being in the family too, you have just such a different history element going on too. And it really all kind of poses a question too. She got into this side of the business because her brother died, but do you think that she still would have gone into wrestling win, lose or draw? Or do you think it would just been like, she was going to go to college like she planned and never had the itch. I think she would have gone to college. I don't entirely know if she would never have gotten involved because I think it's um, very possible she could have gone to college and realized that maybe this wasn't exactly what she wanted. But, you know, her her whole thing has uh, it, Chris's whole angle as a character in this in this book is that she everything she does whether she realizes it or not she's doing for her family so her going to college and going to business school is really ultimately so she can help the family business and um so to her she at at the at the very beginning of the series to her she sees it as getting away from everything but i think ultimately she's going to get her business degree and come back and probably run the promotion or, or help her father run the promotion um i don't know if she ever really thought she would get in the ring but i don't think she would be straying too far from it for for that long no that's fair because like i say for her progression in within the issues like she's just a natural it's one of those that i would say in kind of comparison like when kurt angle came in it was just a natural Mm -hmm. thing for him to adapt to pro wrestling or even what we've seen like with logan paul love him or hate him like when he goes in the ring he's he's a natural at it and you see that with chris especially with ricardo with the art too is just she's so fluid in the moves and especially you know doing all the different styles because it's not just deathmatch wrestling that goes on even though it does happen you're seeing her just combine so many elements like what would you say would be the biggest influence of wrestling style on her character oh um i was looking at when i first started uh thinking about that i mostly watched a lot of uh 90s like uh all japan women's wrestling so it's like a lot of uh kandori and uh akira hokuto and manami toyota and devil masami and bull nakano from like you know so because that's like kind of like i they're all because like american like women's wrestlers tend to be on the bigger kind of slower side like and when you watch like the Japanese wrestlers or even like, cause I started also watching a bit of like uh, the CMLL women's division. And they're also like, like the Mexican and Japanese women wrestlers are so fast compared mm-hmm. to like the American wrestlers. And, you know, considering that she's also, you know, Latina, uh, I figure that like she would have like a lot of, it'd be more like that kind of style than like an American style. So that's what I like I was looking into. So like Starlight Kid was a big uh inspiration okay. for her because you know she's known for like speed titles and all that stuff, Asami as well. And uh yeah, it's uh that's kind of like where I started with her. Uh great great inspiration for that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's a great place to pull a lot of the inspiration from. So I know when we had you in before the first book came out. 
Uh, we had asked you, and I want to go back to this question now. Now the five issues for volume one, we'll say is done because we'll put that positive energy out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because if you're not reading this book, you need to go out and read it right now. I Absolutely. promise you that much. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, there's a lot of heart in it. And this, it's, this is a great comic, bar none. But if you're a wrestling fan, you're doing yourself a big disservice if you're not reading. So what we asked you back then was what character was your favorite to work on? And why? So now that you've you've gone through the first volume, that may or may not have changed. So I'm going to offer it up to both of you. Obviously, Ricardo with drawing and Clay, of course, writing. Who was your favorite character to like work on, and 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 why? You want to go first, Rick? Uh, you can take this one first. <laughs> yeah, that, means, that means we're both thinking about it. Yeah. There um, you go. <clears throat> Well, it goes to show I me mean, how many great characters there are in this book. Like you think about oh, everybody nice. from Burley Bill to King Castro to Boris Gash and then Jack Renault. And like there's inspirations like for watching wrestling. Like you can kind of see the homages to. So I mean, there's so many great ones to pick. Uh, I think at, at the time at the first episode, the first time we talked about it, I think I probably said Candy, if I remember correctly. Yes. And I, I think that's still I think she's still my favorite because um you know what, what we what we did with her in the fourth issue we kind of tease a bit of what where she came from and what her story is about and i i find her to be uh a, a real um well of potential for for stories um because i i feel like she's she's the kind of she's the kind of character in the story who has the least amount of screen time but is probably a little bit more mysterious than everybody else because of it mm -hmm. and so because you've got the family dynamic and that sort of is uh easily recognizable you know what's going on with chris you know what's going on with the bad guys and everything but candy's a little bit of a of a of uh not a blank slate but she's a little bit harder to read in terms of what her motivations are and and where she's from or how she feels about everything and so getting to drop in a little bit of her uh, a hint of her backstory in issue four was was exciting because if only because who knows if we'll ever get to tell it so i wanted to put a little bit of it in there but um i think it makes her a pretty interesting compelling character to to come back to in the future well not because every i think everybody else is are great characters i think we could tell a lot of stories with chris so we could tell a lot of stories with king um but uh, Candy is the kind of character that I, I really want to sink my teeth into, who's got a little bit of a gray background, who uh, might not be the person you think she is, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Yeah, with her, you also got the angle of like, well, how does she even know the Castro's? How did that right. happen? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's got a lot of cool, like, you know, avenues to go with her. Um, I think I said Ray maybe in the first one. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, and uh, I think by the end, uh, I think Chris, definitely Chris was my favorite, just because, like, uh, you know, when you're, like, drawing a comic and you first start, you kind of, like, it's like you're getting to know somebody at first, and yeah. you're, like, don't, uh, you're just trying to figure out, like, how they work, like, how, you know, how you're going to draw them, like what makes them who they are. So like by the end, you know, I feel like I really had her down and like figured out like exactly how to draw her and stuff. And, uh, and just like with having her character with like how Clay wrote it, it just like, I think she has like a really good arc of like, that it just made it like really fun to draw what she was going through and like how she, manage to you know do things at the end oh yeah absolutely i think it's uh, like like i said even if you're not a wrestling fan the comics the art the, the just the arc in a comic sense for chris is is just like it's that it's that hero's journey yeah where you you start off it's it's the burden you didn't want necessarily but yeah. it's the burden you have to take on and then it becomes like its own adventure on its own as you grow into the hero if you will you know yeah. putting in the in the terms of if it was a superhero book and i i think that that's just masterful that's why i said you don't even have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy the book because it's 
it's a it's a superhero book still it's still a comic mm -hmm. but just yeah. regressing and, and i know yeah. we talked about it the first time wrestling in in comics just they're 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 here it's the same thing you know it's, yeah. it's good versus evil it's protagonist antagonist and is there gray areas absolutely but it's all about the build because the best wrestlers whether they're a face or a heel is the same thing as a comic hero or a villain they have the best stories and their journey is what yeah. makes them so yeah you, you nailed it on it as um as far as 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 characters go in stories it's a, you know it's it's always interesting like rick was saying as far as drawing them you're going to know them i think the same thing happens a lot when you write too because uh the little bit of a director commentary um i originally had a much darker ending for this book where um uh it, most of the events sort of played out the same way in the final issue but it was going to end with chris basically turning her back on her family and going out on the road by herself and um mm -hmm. as I, that had been what i had been had in mind as we were putting everything together and as i was writing it but then as i was writing it i was like man king castro is a great character i mean yeah. it's it, it would be such a shame for this guy with such a great dynamic look to just sort of like throw him to the side and candy's such a great character maybe the three of these characters should stick together for a while so so and we had to like also, a little bit. And the more like we got into the issues like i feel like it also felt like uh, chris wouldn't do that <laughs> like yeah. it was kind of like a yeah. thing of like nah, she would not like you know storm out and you know say screw all of them and leave yeah. them you know like it and also like, kinda, like against her character and also at the point at the point we get her to by the fourth issue by the end of the fourth issue again we got to get a little bit of lightness in there at the end you know it just can't be all yeah. depressing as much as like a, a personal pyrrhic victory or whatever would be great from a writing standpoint i don't know if it would be the most crowd pleasing way to end a book so yeah yeah it just wasn't time for the heel turn yet you have to hit the face yeah. peak. You have to hit that face peak before you can do the heel turn. Because if yeah, you hit the exactly. heel turn too soon, it's not going to work out. You know, that's 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 what you find. The same thing goes the other way around. That's why you have Roman Reigns right now. You know, you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. hit that height of the mm -hmm. heel peak, and then you're going to get the crescendo of the face peak. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I thought that that good change, good switch up. Because <laughs> I, I think if we you made her heel at the end there and walks out on the family, it's gonna people are gonna. Well, be like, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that she she wasn't going to be a heel as much as you know her as i was saying before her her kind of drive through the story is that she does everything for the family and then once she realizes that the family is not exactly the supportive element she thought it was mm -hmm. she decides to remove herself from that and start doing things for herself um which i still think is a valid way for her to go but as as everything was coming together i was like this i this family just feels it feels like the resolution here needs to involve uh, the family sticking together more than breaking it apart at, at this point anyway. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, because especially by the time you get to issue five, you go through the journey not only with Mona, but you go through it with King Castro himself mm -hmm. because he comes off the first issue as a very cold promoter, just you know, in it for the dollars. And then you just see him metamorph into like the father that she's looking for, especially once Jack throws down the the ultimate fight, if you will, for issue yeah. five. And to see that dynamic progress, I mean, was that something that you just want to make him as multi-layered as possible so you don't have exactly like the typical evil promoter and you want to kind of show there's more sides to him? Oh, sure. Yeah, he that was another instance where as I originally conceived of that character, he was not an evil promoter, but he was someone who always put business first above anything else. And so the things that were happening around him, to him, to his family, were always going to end up with him on top, regardless of how it hurt anybody else. And as I as we were working through it, that was another thing where it's like, well, okay, but where do you go from there? You, you need to the character as i was writing it felt like it was dying for a face turn so to speak yeah and so i was like no there has to be there has to be something at the end that that makes it feel more like there's there's more to it than him just being business minded because that's the way everybody talks about him through the book and mm -hmm. so to finally let him 
talk and and give his side of the story it needed to be a little bit more than what you you expected it to be yeah and it definitely comes off that way too because you think you know where the story goes and there's so many curves thrown in this which is great because where i like for me as a reader i know where i was issue one and by the time we get to issue five, like I'm already starting to put together like my different board of theories. Okay. Like <laughs> what happened here? And like, I, I, I think I have an idea now, but I'm still mm -hmm. not even sure, but that's the great part of the story that you did because we have just all these different routes. We go with all these different characters and then especially mixing in the action with the ring, but it's even the drama behind the scenes. Like you can kind of see, you know, the, the pure evilness in Jack, so to speak, the confliction in, in King, Mona still trying to figure out what her true destiny is like. There's so much in this for everybody that it really is a story that I think just is going to win over. It, it should be winning over people left and right. And obviously where the story is finished for now, is there ideas for a second volume or more stories kind of spinning out? Because me personally, I think I need a Ray prequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> yes. Uh, you know, the, the, the beauty of the story that we've created is that we always intended it to be something you could do, uh, more episodically or more, you know, I hate using television terms because comics do this, used to do this all the time too, where it's just, you know, an issue is an issue or two issues or two issues. And then you can tell a different story. And, um, <clears throat> part of the, the genesis of the, of the idea was that going on the road with a wrestling show lends itself to that sort of structure which makes it no different than like the incredible hulk tv show or you know mm -hmm. have gun will travel or the fugitive or something like that where it's every you're going to a new town you're meeting new people you get involved with those new people and then you move on um but what happens in mystery television shows it happens in comic books it happens in wrestling so there's really you know, the, the sky is the limit as far as what we could do with the book moving forward. As I already said, I, there's Candy's got a whole bunch of whole bunch of interesting stuff I want to get into. I think there's plenty of room to uh, um, to get into what Ray's about. Um, obviously, the way we leave the book implies that there's quite a lot going on there yeah. that we haven't gotten into yet. But <clears throat> hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll get a ch get the chance to to break it all down. Yeah, I mean, we we need it because like I said after after seeing that last page, and trust me, that is a mic drop moment. I was sitting there going like, "Wait, that this is it? Wait, no, like, when, where's issue number six? Like, I need more." And that's how you that's how you know you have a great story at hand. Well, I think I said this in the fir the first time we talked, but uh, one of my uh, big inspirations for this book was actually Twin Peaks, and when we were coming up to the ending, I was like, "Yeah, I remember how season two of Twin Peaks ended." So let's let's make sure that we have as as equal of a of an impact as that show does to make sure people remember this when they read it. Yeah, I think you succeeded. But now all of a sudden I got hijacked because you're mentioning like the uh, the uh, old Incredible Hulk TV show. Now I'm just <laughs> imagining King Castro having to go to different uh, different territories and walking through, and then you get to see, you know the sad music at the end as he strolls out of the town into the next town. <laughs> well, that's the thing that in, originally the idea was imagine that but it's chris castro who's hitting the road at the end of every yeah. issue at, you know with the music behind her or whatever but i think having having the three of them as a unit moving forward um allows for a lot of different stories and you can and you can thread a lot of different uh subplots and stuff in there so i think it's uh i think it's definitely beneficial to have everybody everybody stick around i, I know rick better balance as well to like yeah you know, the characters and stuff and what we can do with them as yeah. they go on and not to get too into the weeds about, you know, character theory or whatever, but having no, three characters always is a nice balance. You know, you've got your Spock, Kirk, and McCoy kind of mm -hmm. dynamic where you've got the yeah. person who's driving it, but then the other two are kind of the either sides of their conscious uh, conscience, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's, al it's always a nice dynamic to play with. I know Rick wants us to go to Japan, which I also really would like to get yes. us to go to Japan at some point. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's mostly for like the candy stuff, because like you know, because it's already been hinted at it, like she mm -hmm. spent time over there and stuff like that. I think like something like that would be cool. I know that originally I like after uh, we uh, we started like creating the characters and stuff, and uh, we created Ray. I was like, I was kind of like, 
can we just have like a whole issue where it's just him <laughs> and like he dies way later on? Like I was like, can we like can he die at like the end of issue five or something? Can we like move all of this? Can we do mm-hmm. like a, I was kind of like uh, let's do like a bait and switch where like you know you think that like he's the main character for like a while a good while and then it turns out like oh he's dead <laughs> oh, trust me if if money and time was not an object we would have done that because i love yeah. i love that shit so <laughs> hey yeah, listen. we still kind of pulled it off a little bit in issue one i think it works you, you still think that he's you know because we percent it was like oh he's like a, such a huge deal in that first issue so that's why it's so difficult to talk about because i i, I keep changing the language i use between uh, her brother gets killed or there was a tragedy because if you say her brother gets killed it's like oh well i know what happens now in the first issue but you know it, yeah. it doesn't matter it's 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 about more than the death the death is just the way to get into the story so yeah absolutely and you could always i was going to say you can always go the dallas route you know mm-hmm. if you decide in volume two <laughs> it's just in the shower in the back at a, at a show none of it happened mm-hmm. just always pretend <laughs> That this mm-hmm. road, uh, th- th- that would throw away the other story. So it's kind of like, ah, but yeah, I can definitely <laughs> see all three of them going on the road. Japan would be awesome. That, that would be amazing. Be a great, uh, a great adventure. Lots of stuff there. Uh, now I-, I was looking at the time and the comic fans. Sorry, I'm going to hijack this for a minute because I did this last <laughs> time too. Because it's like the, <laughs> the selfishness in me to talk wrestling. Uh, right now, like last time we were talking, I know we, uh, you know, especially me, uh, me and you, Ricardo, were talking a lot more about Japanese wrestling. But what is, what are you guys watching right now? It's just the current things. What are you liking? What's going on in the world of wrestling? You know, what are you, what are you watching? What are you, are you paying attention to these days? I'll get my uh, boring stuff out of the way quickly so you guys can get into it. I, um, <laughs> I actually think I've been watching NXT quite a bit. Yes, and they their women's division is unbelievable like it is stacked uh they when uh, i i don't know if they're they're gonna have to find more room for these women when they eventually bring them up or even if they don't i mean they have enough people down there to create their own compelling thing um yeah they've just got i mean but between not to mention just the uh the women who are coming up naturally through the system they, with julia coming in and um stephanie vacair it's gonna mm-hmm. be even better i think they're they're doing some really great stuff and and i'm still waiting for the surprise because technically speaking tonight could be the debut of delta on and the cw mm-hmm. uh, she still hasn't made her debut yet but we know she put pen to paper so she's definitely going other way so it's kind of looks like you have this whole uh perfect realm I, I i've been really actually paying a lot more attention to nxt lately myself and it's not that i ever gave i didn't ever give up on it but you know sometimes it kind of went into the background Sure. And like, I don't know, I, I in the last few months, it's definitely felt like I, I like at the height of like the black and gold original version of NXT, it's almost gotten back to that level and even greater than that in the women's division. And that was a great women's division oh, yeah. back then too. Phenomenal. Oh, you know, you, obviously you had the, the, the wrestling's four horsewomen mm-hmm. coming up in that era, Asuka coming over and being the big signee yeah. in that era as well. And I, I really feel like the women's division now even – is in nxt in particular is just that next level above not only do they have homegrown talent but or well you know indie talent that they now homegrown talent mm-hmm. and then of course now bringing in like massive stars from from you know Jordan mexico Grace. and and uh also obviously japan and then yeah and then the, the forbidden door with yeah. tna uh, yeah. if you will mm-hmm. stealing the term there uh has been just really paying off and the jordan gray stuff was just amazing yeah like seeing her involved in that and 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 where that's gone and i'm expecting big things coming up because october is upon us so that means bound for glory is coming up Mm -hmm. i'm still uh, crossing the fingers that we get aj styles at bound for glory and i keep teasing the fact that i hope the north reunites in nxt i just want to throw it out don't give me hope don't give me hope rich (laughs) let's 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 just go out on on a whole rampage uh, so, Ricardo, what have you been watching lately? Uh, I've been mostly uh, watching uh, just AEW for the most part. Um, and just kind of like, I haven't had a chance to like, uh, been a bit busy lately. So I haven't had a chance to keep up with like a lot of the stardom stuff and the New Japan stuff. So it's mostly just been AEW and kind of like keeping track of like some of the indie stuff going around like on social media and stuff like that. Same with like stardom and New Japan, just kind of like, all right, let's see what's going on over there. Um, but yeah, it's mostly it's mostly just been AEW for the most part. Uh, so that's kind of like, which I think they've been doing like a really good job lately. So I've been enjoying the shows a lot. 
the in-ring stuff is great over there. Mm. It, all, it always is. I mean, obviously, coming up tomorrow, you got Ricochet versus Will Osprey, which I mean, yeah. that's, that's a sellout in any uh, – that's a couch – or a building should be a building sellout. Oh, too, my God, right? yeah. That yeah. sells me on, on watching two guys. Uh, yeah. The New Japan thing right now is kind of weird because it is that weird zone where you're kind of just waiting for Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, it's, it's like the gift and the curse of the G one, the gap between the G one. Yeah, because yeah, the G one, the G one this year was amazing. Mm-hmm. Where, like Zack Sabre Junior. winning, like that was yeah. so we saw that coming. Yeah. cool. Uh, so good. I, I love that guy, and I'm glad that he's finally getting that big push because he he's deserved it for like so long. Like he's always been the guy that like, you know, he's almost everybody has like an amazing match with him. Like he can have yeah. an amazing match with like you know freaking broomstick so like <laughs> it's just like i'm so glad that he's finally you know they're like all right let's go all in on sax ever jr and like to be like the second guy ever that's like not japanese to win the g1 like that's crazy the only other guy to do is kenny omega yeah, yeah. it's like that's yeah so like this is a great company to be in so you know uh what's been really fun especially recently for me watching wrestling is uh now that now you know being old um i i now realize that i've been able to see these performers who i was introduced to when they were kind of in more of their prototypical era figure it out and just rock it through the stratosphere like um i was (laughs) I was talking to my girlfriend not too long ago, around the time that Becky Lynch kind of like backed away because I'm a massive Becky Lynch fan. And uh, I was like, I said to her, I don't think I've ever watched the entirety of a wrestler's career before. It kind of, you know, bugged me out a little bit that I've, I've basically yeah. been watching her entire career then. I mean, not to say that she's done, but. Right, you know, right, right. But, yeah. you know. And um, looking at some of the other wrestlers like Zack Sabre Jr., who I. The first time I saw him was probably the Cruiserweight Classic, which was like 10 years ago. And to see you you watch him then and you go, oh, yeah, this guy's really got something, but I'm not really sure what it is yet. And then now he's figured it out. You know, he's put on a little bit of weight. He's got the hair going, the jet. He's got his whole thing. Tony Storm is another one who mm-hmm. she was always great. But then you see the moment where she figures it out and she moves into that next level. Same with Swerve. And Osprey, you know, Osprey's been around forever, um, kind of just as oh yeah, he's the guy who does the flippy stuff. But now he's figured it out, and he's found that presence and that character that has really sent him to the next level. It's really, it's really fun to get to see these people find that mark and just go, go for it. Yeah, that's one of the best things about wrestling, though, is you definitely get to see, yeah. especially if you start watching, you know, if you're watching a bunch of different things, you get to see where they came up and from. And then you also get to see the, the change in trends and, and where you go. I mean, perfect example, Will Ospreay, known mostly for doing the flippy stuff, as you pointed out. And then he puts on a little bit of weight, decides he's going to be more of a heavyweight. That doesn't mean he still doesn't do the athletic stuff because mm-hmm. he still does. But with that, he finds this this Billy Goat character, if you will, instead of just the aerial assassin. And now he is the guy. You know, there's in baby faces in wrestling. You the, probably the only person above him. Well, two people would be Roman and Cody. Yeah, and that's good. That's rarefied air to be in. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when Roman Reigns is really the top guy in all of pro wrestling, and Cody Rhodes is probably the 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 best white meat baby face we've had in in i wouldn't call i wouldn't call roman a baby face just yet (laughs) yeah he's getting that baby face the crowd (laughs) receives him like a baby face but i don't think he's a baby face (laughs) i think he's walking that line it's that steve austin so you know he's he's gonna be booked like in the situations where he's a face but he's not always gonna do that face thing he's gonna be i'm gonna be on that edge it's a little for him to like when they do do it, it's going to be incredible. Like he'll oh, yeah. definitely be like the top baby face for sure. Well, eventually um, what they'll do is the double switch. Yeah. But yeah. Like that's when, like, oh, I yeah. hope that's where it's going. Um, uh, I was with like uh, hangman and swerve. have Ooh. been incredible. Like, yeah. I think to me, that's what they've been doing. Like character wise and match wise is the best total package of storytelling and in-ring that we've had like this past year now because they've been going at it for a while now 
Mm -hmm. It's like completely changed like Hangman's character and same with Swerve's character. And uh and just like the the match catalog that they put together is quite it's it's second to none, like as a rivalry. So they've been amazing. Like when Hangman like burned his uh family's house that down, was that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was as like, as so soon good. as that video came out, I was like, "Oh, that house is going up in flames, man!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I love the little things that they've done because, like, even post so post that last match at the pay per view, and like when Hangman's walking through the back and he's going up to people he used to be friendly with, you know, yeah. specifically the Dark Order, yeah. and they just look at him and I don't even know you anymore, and just walk away from him, and it's just that small little thing because in his mind. At, up until that point, I feel like in his mind, he just felt like this is just this feud and hatred between him and Swerve. And now that that's over, I'm just going to be Hangman Page again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be yeah. old Hanger and, and go back to it. And the reaction was like, you don't go where you went and, and become, go back. It doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. And now you're starting to see him embrace the evil, if you will. Yeah. Like now he's, and now it's almost reveling in the fact that he is this disgusting heel mm -hmm. and it's it's a great character because let's be honest i think a lot of people lost track of hangman page yeah. and it's not his fault he was one of the guys that everybody thought was going to be a breakout star in AEW, and got he has been he has been a star yeah. but he, at some point juncture mjf became that top guy and now will yeah. osprey's become that top guy well if you can't be the top baby face hey it's good <laughs> to be the top heel and swear oh, yeah. on the other side he's a great heel and what happens with great heels, just like MJF, yeah. eventually you have to become a face. And that's what's happened with Swerve. So it was a great double switch at the right time to take. Because think about it. We talk about this on Wrestling Night Live all the time. Swerve, you got to remember, he broke into this man's house and stood over yeah, the crib and his baby. That's what I love about the that's story that they're telling is that Swerve never turned. And he's never done anything baby face. And like Hangman, he's I think he's like the first heel that can actually cut a you people promo where actually he's like warranted because he's because he said at first like you guys were cheering this guy when he like broke into my house like what is wrong with you all you know yeah. and like it it does like they've done a really good job with like telling a kind of like complex story oh it's and, an amazing story oh, yeah. you know that's that's the thing about professional wrestling is you can do the most heinous shit yeah for the longest time but when the crowd decides that they like you they don't care anymore like the yeah. i don't know maybe that's what vince mcmahon was counting on I oh. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> but like if you look at what's going on with uh, rhea ripley and dominic and and Liv morgan rhea should still be the heel in this situation yeah Liv, she if you go back and look at where that started with dom she basically abducted him, assaulted him, and turned him into her yeah. pet. <laughs> yeah. And turned and him then, into the family. Yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, he finally, he finally, everything that he's been saying as a heel promo is like actually kind of heartwarming, where he's like, I finally found a woman who treats me for who I am. And, uh, and everybody's booing the shit out of him. And it's like, What's wrong with you people? Yeah, that, yeah. that that you're going for the uh, the abuser here instead of the abused. Even yeah, worse, Liv also, Morgan. Always, yeah, she was justified. Rhea Ripley oh, yeah. took her out. She was yeah. justified yeah. in what she did. So like, it is weird. Yeah, so I always love that uh, that Bret Hart promo, and that was like uh, he goes like, oh, you know. Canada, like America sucks, like Canada's better. Like we've got like universal health care. We got like gun control and people are just like, boo. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, you doing? remember uh, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan yeah, in WWE, was, like, his yeah, best like heel Eco, character Eco was, champion. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was just Eco a Daniel. guy who was a vegan who didn't want to ruin the planet and everybody yeah. thought he was a monster. <laughs> Yeah. It's so fascinating. They just, they, you know, the crowd wants to, they want to hate you until they want to love you. And then they want to love you until yeah. they want to hate you. It's, it's so fascinating. Well, MJF is the same. Remember he, they had the yeah. whole crowd. You're our jerk was their chant. <laughs> yeah. He's our, it, like, like, it, it, like you can't, yeah, and it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's, but it's the U S crowd. I, fi yeah. I find it so fascinating from like the 30,000 foot view 
watching to see how the companies either fight the wave or ride the wave sometimes too yeah. because you think something works so naturally like say when when becky turned on charlotte no nobody backstage thought that that was going to go the way that it went mm -hmm. and so you have becky going out there to cut this heel promo and the crowd's just like not nope, this nope we love what yeah. you did do more yeah. of it and it's like yeah. all right i guess so i mean she did a, that, that i mean her trajectory when people compared her to steve austin i always said that that was almost it was too perfect and it was kind of the same an accidental like first of all the crowd was kind of liking what you're doing yeah. but yeah. then you have the accidental injury steve yep. austin has you know he gets gets yeah. injured and boom it's it's a powder keg and with becky lynch she breaks her nose yep. and she continues on and the crowd just goes this is who we want to be behind. We don't care who you want us to be behind. We want to be behind this person. Yeah. And and I the crowd is going to be right 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the you can't fight it. You know, you can steer or try to steer away from a steer into it. The best performers can always bring the crowd back to where they want them. Mm -hmm. IE MJF as soon as he wanted to be a heel again or they were yeah. not doing that, oh boy, he got hated again. Roman Reigns was yep. a perfect example. Crowd would cheer for Roman during that heel run with the the bloodline, but man, when it came down to it, he knew exactly. Like like I remember that the the uh, what was it elimination chamber wasn't it? Oh, with, with, Sammy. Uh, with Sammy, and he has him up against the barricade, and he's looking at Sammy's wife, and he's working slowly, and he just looks at his wife and just goes, "I loved your husband, but now watch what I'm going to do to him." And it's just like that very calm and collected. And you just go, wow, that is just evil. Like, how mm -hmm. do you say that to a man's wife? Yeah. But that's how you get the reaction. And the yeah, crowd sees that. was the best thing that ever happened to the bloodline. Like, I feel like, yeah. they oh, were, like I feel, at the time, that story was kind of like, all right, guys. But I feel like you're kind of in a bit that spot again. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, like Sami Zayn, like, turned that, like, that's when it really, that's, when WWE really skyrocketed once when Sami Zayn stuff like he got they just let him life. go crazy yeah just when yeah. you feel feeling Usi and just like <laughs> yeah. letting you, you see like everybody break character and it's like what are you gonna do in that moment yeah, yeah and it's also it's just such a like a relatable thing of like trying to fit in and like I want people to like accept me like oh, I want to be with the cool kids you know yeah and mm. like and ultimately you know they don't accept you and do you realize like actually i'm better than all of you guys you know kind of thing <laughs> it's yeah. almost like you rejected them i wanted to be part of the cool kid table and then yeah. i got there and then i realized that you guys are terrible so now i reject you yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that it's the reverse yeah. yeah 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 and as much as i love becky and i think she would have been successful on her own I think Nia Jack should get like 10% of all of her merch sales. <laughs> <laughs> and well, she's on a run right now. I was going to say, too. now she's doing a, doing a great yeah. job. Like, that's why you got to keep with it. You know, sometimes it, there's a rough yeah, build. It's exciting, but then, you know, it's, it's hard. Like, that's why, like, also, I hate the current climate of, like, wrestling fans online because, like, everything yeah. needs to be, like, yeah. immediate or, like, if something doesn't make sense, like, right now it's like it's like well this sucks and it's like well i don't know give it some time like you know this is obviously the start of something and yeah we'll, we'll see play. how it goes or like it back with clay, clay said this earlier to bring it back to that uh we said about the the match in the book and saying letting it breathe and that's what fans need to do oh yeah Sometimes fans yeah. need to let the wrestling breathe yeah. Let it let it tell a story. If we rush through Swerve and Hangman, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I don't yeah. care. They could wrestle another million times at this rate, and I'm going to watch every one of those matches mm -hmm. with a big smile on my face because so far I haven't been disappointed at all. It's not yeah. the sometimes when people go, "Well, we saw this match a million times." The only time that's a bad thing is if the match wasn't good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's, it's like, well. I was yeah, just going to say. Uh, Everybody loves long says they love long term storytelling, but they only say it once the story is over. Yeah, right. you know, they exactly, they never yeah. they're never willing to because it's like I I years ago when I was working on something I was going back and I was watching the WrestleManias that I I hadn't watched so like everything from like 2000 to like 2013 or something, and uh, I was just shocked at how quickly 
everything moved. Like obviously you're you've got a year in between, but you're looking or and I started going back and looking at all the the storylines that I remembered from when I was watching as a kid, and it's like pay per view to pay per view. These things that in my head was were like two years worth of story are like six months max, you know, yeah. and it's the kind of thing that I think just gets harder for them to do. Um, like I've I've heard uh, comedians talk about how fifty years ago, if you had an hour long set, you could you, you could do that set for fifteen years because you uh you were seeing new crowds and it wasn't such it wasn't so immediately uh, available to everybody whereas now every every comedian needs to have a brand new hour set every time they do a special because mm. of the internet because of how often they're exposed to everybody and people always want something new and the same thing with wrestling wrestler if if you watch the McMahon documentary uh they talk about how many times Hogan and Andre fought just on the road and you can just keep used to be able to keep just doing that and doing it and doing it and doing it but now you've got to keep fresh fresh matches you've got to keep things turning over otherwise people get start to get bored even if what they're watching is is really good very yeah. true well like i say it, it kind of echoes with wrestling with hard style juice too because it's, it's not your average story it's something you can always go by, dive back into there's a lot that's going on with this book and before we let you guys get out of here if this ever got picked up for a movie, who do you think you would want fan casted as as Chris Castro? Because I have an idea who I think would play it. So it's funny you should ask this because I actually thought about this the other day because I hadn't ever really thought about it. Uh, but it just popped into my head. Uh, I can't remember her name. <laughs> Gr great start, Clay. Uh, <laughs> the girl who played Supergirl in The Flash. Oh, she might be a little too old, but I th I think she would I think she would do a good job. Okay, I know I, I I'm picturing her. I think that she would be a great fit. I I really do. I, yeah. I can picture her in my head right now. Because I was because like for me, I always see Roxanne Perez from NXT. Oh sure, yeah, actually yes, that would if you're going straight up wrestler, yes, that would. Be I just great I, just with the the work that she's been doing in the ring with the character, like I could see her, you know, completely pulling off Mona. Mm -hmm. And really like taking that character some places too. And plus, like I said, the in ring ability is right there. It's just something yeah. about like, just, just, I, for whatever reason, even though like Mona is a face and obviously Roxanne is a heel right now, like I can kind of see, like, well, I think she could pull off both. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think she's doing that's another one who, when she first came up, I was like, yeah, like she's good. I don't understand why everyone's treating her like the, the second coming here. But since she's kind of gone heel, she's been really, really good. Um, oh, absolutely! And that that actress's name is Sasha Sasha Cali, I believe. Is her name. I, I just looked that up on IMDb. I was like, the, through the magic of IMDb, <laughs> we, we're there. But yes, yes, she did a great job in, in that in that movie as well. But yeah, Roxanne Perez is uh, the. There's a reason I, I was pretty sure they were going to bring her up to the main roster, but mm -hmm. now that we're seeing the influx of talent that they're bringing in from outside the company into NXT now with Julia, Stephanie, Delta, there's that's the reason they kept her there. Cause that's a good welcoming committee. Yeah. You, you have your, your a top person who can get them in the door, get them over and yeah. move Rick, on. Rick, did you ever, did you have anybody in mind when you were drawing her? Yeah, say. Um, not really. It was mostly just kind of like trying to, it's kind of going for like, I just wanted her to like look small. And uh, yeah. so actually like <laughs> I thought of, uh, it was more like, uh when in dragon ball and kid goku and you see him when he's little compared to like so that's kind of like what i'm i was going for for the most part um but actually uh roxanne is like a really great comparison and i do yeah. look at her at times for like all right because she because she's like she's like super young she's like i think she's like 21 or 22 tops yeah, or something yeah. like that um so yeah because because yeah she was a a big prodigy like even because like didn't she win like rh women's champion when yep. she was like 18 or something yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah like, she was yeah. 18 her and miranda alice they had great matches in our oh my god yeah yeah so yeah yeah they're tremendous stuff um well before just gotta get a couple ones to get out that uh right now other than the fact that we hope 
that we get a whole universe off of hard style juice. Go out and get the comics, everybody. Yes. Uh, let's make this happen now, please. And thank you. Uh, even for selfish reasons. Uh, is you guys have any projects that you're working on currently that you can share with us? Well, uh, just to say that the easiest way to get the book, it's on Amazon, but if you want it all in one place, go to hardstylejuice.com. It'll take you right to the Amazon page. Got all five of the books right there. You can uh, you can uh, check them all out. Um, I've got a I've got some stuff that's sort of picking up right now that I can't really get into. Um, but if you want to hear me yap into the void some more, I've got a couple podcasts that I do. I've got the uh, Rotten Horror Picture Show podcast where we talk about films off the Rotten Tomatoes 200 Best Horror Movies of All Time list, and uh, b- the Badass podcast where myself and Sean Murphy talk about the Batman the Animated Series show. Those are two podcasts I shall be listening to because I have interest <laughs> in both of them. Uh, I'm a big horror fan, so as a matter oh, of awesome. fact, to, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to see uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre for its 50th anniversary Ooh, in the theater. Excellent! Oh, nice. That's, that's, already, a, that's a good go. time. That's a good time. <laughs> have you seen the substance yet? Uh, I have not seen that yet. I haven't had a chance. Is it, is go. it worth it? Very good. I, it looks it looked phenomenal, and then I was kind of like I, I just got real busy. But I will make some time this weekend to go see it. Got a lot going on going into New York Comic Con, but mm. yeah, I definitely want to see that. And I'm uh, we've already had it checked off on our bucket list. Well, not even bucket list. We're doing it to go see Terrifier three. So that comes ah, out in a couple excellent. weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. excellent. All right, Ricardo, what about you? Uh, well, uh, projects I can't talk about them. I got some stuff lined up already. Uh, I can't talk about it too much yet but i think you'll probably start hearing about it soon um something cool that i'm proud of that i did recently was uh i'm doing you know uh idw is doing that crossover between like teenage mutant ninja turtles and naruto so i got to do like uh four connected covers for that so so i'm proud of that so check those out if you uh want as they start coming out i think the first one comes out in november i think so, and you did yeah. the covers for uh, all those AEW books that came out too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I got to do that. That was cool. I did that for uh, San Diego Comic-Con. I got to draw Swerve, uh, Orange Cassidy, Tony Storm, uh, Britt Baker, Darby, and Wells, and Osprey. Yeah, to for like the comics, the AEW comics that they announced in uh, during San Diego Comic-Con. So that, that was pretty cool to get to do that. Um, getting some behind the scenes stuff of how things work over there. Um, and, uh, oh, and if you're in New York area, be a New York comic con this, uh, October, I think it's 17th through the 20th or something. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll be there. If you well, we an artist alley, you can find me. <laughs> and I'll so we'll definitely stop by and say hi, cause we'll be there too. Yeah. yeah so we'll I'll be, I'll be floating there. around somewhere during that, during that weekend. So, oh, nice. Yeah, and everybody should be taking the homework assignment to go after the show. The liner notes are in that you can go right to hardstylejuice.com and go get this series. Trust us, this is, we will say this all the time, this series is something special because if you're a fan of pro wrestling, you're going to really enjoy this. If you're not into pro wrestling, this might make you a fan because this series has got so much heart, action, and drama. You're going to be caught up in it. And once you get to that ending of issue five, which is out today on Comixology, you, you're you going to be going, where is the issue six? Where's the next chapter? That is how good this series is. You need to get on social media, you know, put hashtag S A or S yeah, H S J renew or something like that. We'll come up with something. Yeah, sure. really start pumping this Because we want to see this book come back. Clay and Ricardo, thank you guys again for coming on the show. We definitely got to talk again soon. Absolutely. You know, and if you're, if you're on the fence, if you're on the fence, you know, I don't know if I want to spend however much money on a wrestling comic. If you have Amazon Prime, which I know you do because everybody does, you can read it for free. So it doesn't even it's it's not even it's it's not even an effort. So yeah. please I say just, read it. Please, read please it just read the book, please. Somebody say, just please. <laughs> read read the book and then go buy the book. Yeah, there you, there you go. Yes, exactly. It, it's the easiest way to do it because we want to see this. We want to get a physical copy of this. Like you need this book in your life and the review will be coming out along with 40 other reviews from nerd initiative this bullpen on nerdinitiative.com tomorrow. So we're definitely lining it up in the mix because we give you the best picks of the week. And this book is seriously one of the best picks of the week. And the series is one of the best of the year. So I can't recommend it enough. So guys, thank you again for coming on. Thank Rich, you guys thank so you. much. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Anything we can do to help promote this? Seriously, this is one of our favorites here. So we will we have no problem screaming from the top of our lungs. Go get hard styled <laughs> juice. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. it. Second that. I, I third that. I tenth that. I millionth that. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> absolutely. For Rich and myself, thank you again for tuning in for another edition of Turn a Page, and we'll end it like we always do. When you're at the comic shops and you have a great issue on your tablet, because it's not on in print form just yet, but hopefully soon, like hard style juice, and you see somebody struggling to find something at the shop, hand yours off to them. Tell them to turn a page. We'll see you next time. Wait a minute. What's that line I'm supposed to say? Oh, I'm out. Such wasted time Swiping left and swiping right On people you could know Cause anyone who's worth a damn Be worth way more than a picture could ever show You can find the right light Find the right angle And never find your soul And it can feel like a losing battle And this plot is full of holes This modern way of finding love Just makes me feel so alone And I can't be the only one Sick of staring at my phone So look up Talk to me A better way to spend our energy Just look up Talk to me time fable everyone has just one true love all i know is you're across this table and you're all i'm thinking of so look up talk to me a better way to spend our energy just look up talk to me Swiping left and swiping right on people you could know. Whoa, oh, whoa.